Okay, so OMG. I just got through watching the Half and a Half Knots season 4 episode 16. And when y'all was leaving me the comments saying wait till next episode, I really wasn't expecting what happened at the end. But I'm trying to get through it because I'm still on an emotional high from the end. But we'll work our way on back into this emotion. Because, oh, I got my, all my life, I screamed and hollered. I know y'all did too. It was everything. It was fucking everything. Oh my god, this is one of the episodes I want Mike be in the episode review. Oh my god. Okay. So it started off with Hannah and Jim of her telling Jim that Wyatt is dead. He OD'd. He want to know how he died, what happened, who was there, what the police name was, all this stuff. And she like, I don't know. Like, I just came to tell you that your son dead. I don't know who he was with, where he was with. She did know that he was at a hotel and she knew the cop name. But other than that, she like, I don't know. So he freaking out. He like, I need to get to the DA. He freaking out, telling the cops he needs to get to the DA. They rough him up because he losing it. And she, he asked Hannah to go talk to the police. I mean, to the DA. And she like, no. Like, I did what I had to do. I did this for you, Catherine. I ain't doing nothing for you. He like, I'll pay you. She was like, I don't want your money. I was just like, yes, please, walk out on him. Because Jim think money solves every fucking thing. And he, I mean, I understand this is wrong. I feel more for Catherine. But I understand this is fucking wrong. But, um, fuck him. So, <laughs> Benny, um, in war is at the shop. And Benny is still mad that the phone lines are not working. So, Warg still got the gun on him, but Benny don't know that Warg got the gun on him because he waiting on Candace to hit him up on his phone saying that the money is ready. But Benny was ready to leave out the door, and Warg stops him from going to talk to David. And he tells him, like, no, you need to be cool-headed. You don't need to go over there popping off. And he looking at Warg like, you usually to be the one that pop off, and you being level-headed. But, you know, Warg just trying to stall so he can get the money from Candace. And at that time, Mitch pull up, and Mitch had got into the tow truck and kind of blocked the window of the shop, and then he planted drugs into Ward's car. I was like, yes, because y'all know, I'll, I'll, ever since Ward been doing this to Candace, I want his ass to go, too. So, then he goes in there, and him and Ward has these little comments towards each other, because they don't like each other or whatever, and I don't like him either. But, um, Benny is, I mean... Mitch is telling Benny, like, come on, let's go over here to David and get these, um, get these phones back on. And War is trying to stop them or whatever. But Mitch ain't having that shit. War don't want to shoot both of their ass. And I think he ended up getting a text from Candace. So he ended up letting them leave. Jeffrey and Melissa is in the bedroom. And she all been here like, oh, this is cute. He like, don't get too comfortable, bitch. Like, I'm trying to get up out of this marriage. I don't want to be with you. He called her a two-bit whore. I fell out. Because I was like, well, yeah. And she was like, well, no, I'm not. Um, he, She was like, if I am, you are too. And he was like, I'm not doing it for money. Because he, he only doing it because he's got his mama. And his ass and killed somebody. And his mama know. But she don't know that. So, but he was calling her a two-bit whore and all kind of other shit under the sun. And I was just like, yeah, because I don't like Melissa. And what I really don't... Ooh, Jeffrey be making me want to slap the fuck out of him when he be getting punked around here. Because she was basically telling him, like, you gonna go along with this plan. I have to... Unless you got some money for me to take care of my damn parents, you gonna go along with this plan, or you gonna kiss me like I'm the best man that you ever kissed, or I'm gonna kick your ass, basically, she was telling him. And, I'm, and he just sitting there, and I'm like... I understand that your mom got blackmail on you, but I will, that bitch don't know. So why are you letting her talk to you like this? If I was, she don't know nothing about the blackmail, so you can be all up in her face like, bitch, sit down. You the one need this money. Go get in, sit in the corner and follow the rules. But the way she allow him, I mean, he allows her to talk to him, I be so mad at him. Like, she need y'all money. You don't need hers. You're not doing a favor for her, like... Ew. Um, so, anyways, she just rubbed me the wrong way. 
And she was like, if you, if, if I can get, we can get rid of your mom, I will help you. And I'm just like, girl, shut up. Um, Catherine, um, what I was going to say. Oh, Catherine caused, um, uh, David ended up coming by. David ended up coming by to Veronica's. And David is like, I'm coming here to get my son. And she was like, no, you're not. He ain't going nowhere. And she was like, um, she was like, don't you come in here ruining this. He with Melissa. And he was like, I filed for divorce, and I'm coming to get my son because he ain't safe here with your ass. So he ended up calling Jeffrey downstairs, him and Melissa come. And Jeffrey punks out and don't go with his daddy because he's scared of his mama. And he was like, she don't got nothing on you. And Jeffrey was like, yes, you do. He didn't tell his dad what was going on, but he just let his dad know, like, I can't leave, sorry, this bitch is crazy, I'm stuck, so then, um, Catherine calls and tells Veronica about Wyatt, and this bitch is just cold, she act like she was, um, concerned on the phone with Catherine, but soon as that fucking phone hit the damn thing, it was just like, bitch, I'm back cold, I don't give a fuck about that little punk ass Wyatt, I really don't like your whole damn family. That's how she was acting. And then when she said it to Jeffrey, you know Jeffrey is going to go crazy because Jeffrey loves him some Wyatt. And I, that's a, another reason why she really didn't want to tell him because she knew Jeffrey was going to spaz out over Wyatt. And then, like, David was like, she said she was going to see him. She was going to have Jeffrey go and take her to see Catherine or whatever. And then David runs out to go check on Jim. She was like, yeah, go check on Jim. Go check on him. And then she told Wyatt, I mean, she told Jeffrey, first your dad bitch dead, now your bitch dead. I said, oh, my God, I hate her. I really hate her. I really hate this lady. Every episode, I'm going to say I hate her. Fuck all that you hate to love somebody. No, I hate her. If she would just die off the episode, off the season, I would be okay. I, everybody else dying around me, and I'm like, damn, that's fucked up, even though I didn't too much care for them. But her, her dying, I'm going to just throw a party. I just, I just don't like her. I just hate for women to treat their kids like that. Fuck you treating Candace and Hannah and everybody else in gym like that. But for her to treat her own child like that, bitch, I just want her to die. Um... So, War and Candace, they meet up. She give him the money, and she's scared, fucking nervous, and he was like, is it all there? Do I need to count it? Then he fucking had a nerve to tell her sorry. I'm like, whatever. And then she was like, I should have told you about the four million in the beginning. I said, this bitch is continuing to lie. Because, bitch, we all know you got like 7.5. <laughs> you just continuing to lie. But, hey. He don't know, fuck it, whatever. Um, he gonna tell her he gonna stop by every now and then for a tune-up. And I was just like, oh my God, she need to fucking kill him. Like, I'm not gonna keep on letting you just come around and rape me when you fucking want to. Because you know I'm scared of you. Fuck that. Bitch, no. I'm just saying, he gotta go. Um, after he leaves, she... She cries in the car. And I was like, Candy Cane, Candace, bitch, you harder than this. Why? Oh, like, I just want the, the hard Candace from season one to come back. This punk-ass Candace ain't working for me. Jeffrey and Veronica, <laughs> they waiting to go to Catherine's house. She is in the house getting wasted, like, totally wasted. And she talking shit to him. He dead, boy. He dead. Doesn't matter. Because he over there like, I need to go over there and to Catherine and see about Wyatt. And she just like, what are we rushing for? Like, he already fucking dead. It ain't like he going nowhere. And then he said something to her. And she was like, watch your language or you going to get a spanking. And I was like, that sounds disturbing. But okay. Like, I hate her. I, I don't know how many times I can say I hate her. But then he tried to get up. She was like, sit down. Sit down, boy. And he sat down. I'm like, you know, I'm all for, you know, kids listening to their parents. I really am. But I just want him to just say, fuck you. Just period. Fuck you. I just want him to cuss at her. Just like, just 
bring it out of his mouth and just cuss at her. Not no damn, oh my gosh, no, fuck you. Just period. I... Anyway, Veronica, she started talking about his clothes, calling, talking about them damn floral ass prints, talking about you over there grieving. And I'm like, oh my gosh, shut up. She was like, if looks can kill, you will kill me right now, huh? He was, he was like, yeah, bitch, like, yes. She was like, you want me dead? And I'm like, everybody wants you dead. Like, we need, do we need to do a poll? We all want you dead. I'm dead. just saying. Then she was like, um, that boy was ruining you. Now you free to be with Melissa. Then, um. She started talking about Melissa being fat and shit. Talking about that's what happens when girls being born in the hood. Because all they do is order fried chicken. And y'all know I gotta send it. Y'all know I gotta send it. I'm from the hood and I love fried chicken. Like, I have no problems with saying I love chicken, fried chicken, boiled chicken, baked chicken, barbecue chicken, lemon pepper chicken, garlic. I'm just saying. So I gotta send it. So, I just was like, bitch, you came from the hood. Like, shut up. Like, you wasn't born over there with a silver spoon in your mouth. Bitch, you came from the hood. We remember that. I just want them to really go back into your backstory when your ass was on drugs and drinking and all that shit. Bitch, shut up. So, Jeffrey all antsy and shit. He over there nervous as fuck. He over there like, oh, I just want to kill this bitch. And I'm over here like, jump off the couch, bitch. Like, what are you waiting on? So, when he did jump up, sit down. I'm like, <sighs> she's still over there drinking and shit. So, she was like, the boy is dead. She was like, stop acting like a pansy. Um, your little precious, you gonna go over there and see your little precious wife's body. I'm like, whew, I, I'm telling you, it was taking everything in me to keep watching that episode with her punk ass, like, for real. Um, she said some other shit. Let me keep going. She was like, at the criers, you better stand up straight. You better not cry. You better not say a motherfucking thing. And then she was like, I'm so glad that Melissa having a boy because I could do it over. I could raise a man. And I'm just over here all this time. I'm wanting Jeffrey to best. You know, I don't think, you know, the Bible say you shouldn't fuck with your parents. But at that time, I just, and I don't want a man ahead of one man. I really, really don't. Mm, this is why he need Candace with him at all fucking times, so I shouldn't feel like a man should hit her. But I really want a man to hit her. But yeah, she just like, oh my, when she said she wanted a boy so she could raise a man not like you, I'm like, he doesn't, nobody else needs a mother like you. Nobody else needs to go through the experience of what Jeffrey is fucking going through. Nobody. No baby. Girl, if Melissa would allow that, Melissa need to be killed. Like, bitch, after you had a baby, Melissa, like, you should be paid off. So, everything, you killing her after the baby born. I'm just saying, because you're not going to tell tell me that you're going to raise my baby when the mother is here. And the mo mm, mm, I'm just saying. So, <laughs> she then started saying something about uh, calling Quincy to beat his ass again. Talking about, but you got him back. You got him back, girlfriend. You got him back good. I said, <laughs> let me keep watching because I want to hit her through the TV screen, the computer screen, every screen that I will watch this on, I would want to hit her. Like, there is nothing would even make me like her as a real person because she played this character so good. I don't, I think I will walk past her as a real, like, human being because she plays this character so good and I'm like if you could play this character this good bitch it's some truth in this evilness that you got cause oh she need a lot of awards or something cause I can't um she then she tell him to dry his eyes and his punk ass dried his eyes then she calls the housekeeper in tell the housekeeper she gotta go and then say um cause Jeffrey junkie no she calls Melissa down and say Jeffrey junkie friend died and tells the housekeeper to throw all Jeffrey clothes away because she bought him some new clothes because she don't like his little floral ass prints. So, whatever. War gets pulled over by the cops. They come over there two cars deep and they pull him over and they get the drugs and the money out of his car and they search his car illegally like some dumbasses. So, y'all can get this man off. 
I'm like, he telling you y'all don't have no permission. And he was like, yes, we can if we got a tip. And I'm like, y'all don't get this man off. And now War is mad because he's thinking that Candace have set him up not knowing it wasn't even Candace. It was Mitch Jazz. I'm like, fuck, Candace can't win for fucking lose. So, Hannah and Catherine is at the house. She's trying to get her to come eat. And punk ass Veronica and Jeffrey comes over. And she walks in and throws her coat at Hannah and say, pick it up. Hannah was like, bitch, you pick up your coat. And then she was like, Jeffrey, you pick up my coat. I'm like, I would have walked on it, stepped on it, all that good stuff, whatever. Um, so Jeffrey comes in there like, is it true? She like, yeah, he cries. What he cry for? Because once he cried, it wasn't about Catherine anymore. It wasn't about Catherine over there grieving for her son. Because Veronica was so invested in her son crying and wanted him to stop fucking crying. And was like, this is why I didn't want to bring you over here. You need to stop this. And then once Hannah started rubbing his back, oh, it was over because she was consoling him. And Hannah's just like... He just lost his friend. And she like, stop talking, touching my son. She was like, as soon as you stop touching mine. I said, yeah, finally, honey, I'm liking something you say. <laughs> I'm just saying, because usually I hate her too. But I was just like, I mean, she just going in on Jeffrey, like going in. I'm trying to remember all the stuff because I was writing some stuff down. But I just was so irked by her just trying to make him stop crying that I'm like, Who's a fucking evil bitch? And it was getting to her that Hannah and Catherine kept on saying that Jeffrey loved Wyatt. So that was really getting up under her skin. And they was like, they were friends, they were friends. And she was like, he doesn't love him as a friend. Like, bitch, don't even play with me like that. He crying because, and he kind of, she shedded herself up. So then she just was like, this is sick. Get your ass in the car. I'm like, oh my God. So Hannah just finally got fed up with her ass. And Hannah just was like, stop. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, oh my God. So then Catherine, you know, trying to calm Hannah down. And I'm like, oh my God, bitches. This is not about y'all. This is about Catherine being there for her and her losing her son. I get that what Veronica was trying to tell Jeffrey. But at the same time, like, all of the arguing, let the boy fucking cry. If he got to go in the corner and sit in there and cry, let him fucking cry. But your focus being mad about him crying is taking the attention off your friend losing her son. And you being a straight-ass bitch. And I'm glad Hannah called um, her out on that. Then she was like, why you keep looking down at that body? Oh, wait, before that part. She was like, um, I can't do this. And she was like... Get that grief out your system. You acting like a drama queen. You you acting like a sissy at a funeral. I oh, she need to burn. She's going to burn in hell for that. She's going to so burn in hell. But then she said, why you looking at that bottle? And he said, because I want to hit you over the head with it. I said, please grab it. Please hurry up and grab the motherfucking bottle. Like, Go like this. Swing it. Hannah, you grab it, give it to him. I don't know, but I just wanted somebody to grab this fucking bottle. So, then, like, she like, you not gonna hit me. Um, he was like, only because you're my mom. And she was like, no, because you don't have no heart. You're not a real man. Real men have heart. I mean, just going at it. She was like, um, um this doesn't make sense. A man crying over a man. She was like, look at all these women in this room. You don't see no women in here acting the way you acting. And I'm just going out. Oh, my God, just, ugh. Then she was like, it's out of line. And he was like, what, loving me, uh, me loving Wyatt is out of line. And she just was like, basically, yeah. So she was like, you acting like a ghetto bitch in a club. I was like, you gonna stop talking about ghetto motherfuckers and people from the hood. You gonna stop doing that, hoe. I'm just saying. But when she said that, the best part of my life was, I am like, this, like, really gave me, life of my day and I might get some more but it just gave me the beginning of it I promise when he grabbed that fucking knife off that tray and stabbed her in the chest I'm like please dig it all the way through dig it just make sure it hit some arteries make sure it hit the like she ain't got no heart so it's gonna be real shallow around, around that motherfucker so that's probably why she didn't die instant because she don't have no heart in there like oh but I was so here for him stabbing her 
And I'm really not here for men putting their hands on women. So he, you know, he really didn't put his hands on her. So I give him a little pass on that one. But I was so here for him stabbing her. I was so here for him stabbing her. And I'm so mad that I didn't watch it when everybody else watched it. But I watched it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure you follow me on uh, social media by the ghetto U T H A, not T H E. And I will talk to y'all in the next video.